So, um, that's it. The endocrine system, and when we take when we take the word endocrine, it, it means like endo means inside, and crin means to secrete. So you're secreting chemicals inside your body. There is a word exocrine, like your sweat. Your sweat is your sweat is an exocrine gland. Just to give you an example of the word exocrine, it means like your sweat's going through a duct. It's not going into the blood. So we consider sweat like a hormone. It goes, it doesn't go into your blood. But most endocrine stuff goes into your blood and, and, and goes around. <clears throat> it's a continuation of your nervous system. So if you think about your nervous system, you are, think about like, um, okay, think about like fight or flight, right? So um, you see like a spider or like a snake, all right, like you see a snake, right? And so what's gonna, first thing that's gonna happen your eyes see the snake, and that goes to your brain, and then your brain is going to send a signal down to your leg muscles, and you're going to run. Right? That's an immediate response. Right? That's all nervous system. It's going from your eyes. You got a wire going to your brain, and you got wires going down to your leg muscles. So um, that's nervous system, but. The endocrine system is also working there. So your eye saw the snake, it sent a message to your brain, your brain sent, it's got wires going down to your legs, but it's got other wires that go down to your adrenal glands. The glands not important, but it's going down to like close to your kidneys and that's gonna dump adrenaline or epinephrine. So you've got two things that are allowing you to run from the snake. One is the the nervous system you know the 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 action potential the, the spark the electrical signal that goes down to your legs and makes your leg muscles move and run away from the snake right so let's say you run you you're sitting at like the dinner table i forgot to shut that off let's say you're sitting at the table and you see a snake in the corner of the room right immediately before you really stop and think about it Oh, well, what kind of snake that is? Is that, is that snake going to bite? You jump up. You're like, oh, shit, and you jump up, and you're out of the kitchen before you know what's going on, right? But by the time you get into the living room, you don't stop. Like, you're now you're pumped up. Now you're going. That's your adrenaline. So you re, your body's released chemicals that have made your heart rate go up, and started sending a bunch of energy down to your legs because now you understand you've got to go that snake might start coming after you probably going to run out of the house and so they work together your nerves and your hormones they can they can work together your nerves are like right away before you're even thinking before you're even like hey that's a snake that's a whatever you're already moving, but your nervous system doesn't, it starts right away, but it doesn't last for a long time compared to hormones. So the adrenaline, the epinephrine, the adrenaline that lasts for a longer period of time. So your body's got two systems. It's got like a backup, you know, like a redundancy. Your body just doesn't have one system to do something because if that one system fails, then you're screwed. You've got to have a backup system too. So we've got our nervous system, but we've also got hormones just to make sure. Hey, we just want to make sure that you're running. Like you better be running because that's a snake. So we're going to release a bunch of adrenaline just in case your brain starts to abort the mission. The chemical is going to keep you going, right? So, and that and that's what happens. So like sometimes you get like something scares you and uh then you feel like all oh, like something scares you and you immediately realize oh that was nothing 
right? But you're, but you're like tingling inside and stuff. You're feeling like the adrenaline. It's, it's like your body, your brain has told your body, everything's cool, relax. It's not, it's not what you thought it was, right? Like, like someone almost hits you, but they don't, right? But now you're like, you still, cause you're, the adrenaline started going anyway. You know, hey, this is a life threatening situation. The car missed you or you didn't, or you started to spin out, but you, but you're cool. You straightened out and you're going again, but the adrenaline, it's in you, right? It's so you're still feeling like you got to do something, right? Sometimes it could, you know, if you feel like euphoric, like, yeah, I did it kill me. And I'm still a lot. That's part of that is the adrenaline. So, Anyway, that's kind of how hormones work. That's that's one of the things that hormones do. They they complement your nervous system. They back it up. And, and the nerves are what makes hormones released most of the time. You're not going to have a hormone released unless a nerve has told your brain that something's wrong. So you've got your nervous system hooked up to your brain. And in this... For this lecture, there's there's two particular glands that are that are important, and one is the hypothalamus, and the other one is the pituitary. In fact, I'm gonna just underwrite the hypothalamus. So the hypothalamus is wired up. You've got wires from all around your body. I'm saying wires, but I mean nerves. You got all these wires hooked into your hypothalamus. They're from everywhere. You got wires from your heart, from your lungs, from your stomach, from everywhere. It's all running into this central computer. And your hypothalamus is processing it. Your hypothalamus wants to know what's up with your body. Is everything normal with your body? In other words, like is everything in homeostasis? Like, how's things with the temperature? Is is it too hot? Are you too cold? Because if you're too hot, you're gonna sweat. That's a that's a that's a. Um, and by the way, that's that's an endocrine, like an exocrine. You know, it's a hormone response. Um, if it's too cold, you're gonna shiver, right? So your body's always trying to keep things in homeostasis, balance. Not too hot, not too cold. Blood sugar, not too high, not too low. If your blood sugar goes too high, insulin, you release insulin. If your blood sugar goes too low, there's another hormone that you release called glucagon. But you're trying to balance homeostasis. You're trying to keep that balance. You always want your blood sugar at this normal let's say just to give it a number at a hundred, right? You always want your blood sugar like at a hundred, 90, 100, 110. If your blood sugar goes to 80, now you got to release a hormone to get it back up to 90. If it goes up to 150, you got to release insulin to get it down. So hormones work to keep everything. Yeah. And, and what I gave you an example of just now was called negative feedback. And I'm just writing it somewhere random here. Negative feedback. That's your body's way. You know, think about like if something negative is happening to you, how do you fix it? Like I'm too cold. But your body's going to respond to that. Your body's not going to just be cold and you're just going to die and nothing. You're going to start shivering so that you could like start to generate some heat. Or if you're too hot, you're not going to just die. I, you're going to start sweating. So if something negative happened to you. It's like too hot. How do we get rid of that hotness? Like how do we make our body less hot? We start sweating. That's negative feedback. That's your body trying to control something through negative feedback. My blood sugar is too high. You're not going to just leave it. 
So negative feedback, you release insulin, get the blood sugar down. That's negative feedback. Insulin is a negative feedback type, type of reaction. Are you going to make insulin forever? No. You're not sweating forever. You're not shivering right now because the problem's solved. Once the problem's solved, negative feedback stops. So, you know, you've got, they call them like negative feedback loops, right? So like, you know, there's like wires around your body that are sensing the temperature. It's too cold. All these wires are going up to your hypothalamus saying, hey, it's cold. The hypothalamus is going to send, well, actually your brain, I'll just go general. Your brain's going to send other wires around to all your muscles and make it shiver. So it's like a loop. If it's still cold, so like it's cold, signal is sent to the brain. The brain sends a signal down to the muscle. And as long as it's cold, as long as you're cold, you're going to keep telling the brain that it's cold. Your brain's going to keep stimulating your muscles to shiver until, until you get warm. And when you get warm, you, you break it. You break that loop. So it's no longer cold. So all the sensors in your body, they don't sense that you're cold anymore. So nobody talks to the brain. The brain stops talking to the muscle. Same thing with blood sugar. So I'm just going to write BG for like blood glucose. Blood glucose is, is high. And then insulin. Blood glucose is high. Your blood sugar is high. Tell the brain you've got, you know, you've got little receptors that pick it up, little sensors that pick up that your blood sugar is high. Tell the brain. The brain's going to release, I mean, your pancreas releases it, but the brain's going to tell the pancreas to release insulin. You're going to keep releasing insulin until, until the brain doesn't get a signal that the blood sugar is too high. Once the blood sugar is normal, then no one's going to tell the brain anything. And then once the brain doesn't get any more signal, it's not going to tell the pancreas, the pancreas to make insulin. Like it shuts the whole circle down. That's negative feedback. You know, what is it that's like throwing you off? You want to fix it and get back to your normal status. There is something called positive feedback, and I'm not going to write it. You don't see many examples. Most things, as far as like hormones, what's going to make hormones stop? Negative feedback, meaning problem solved. No need to keep addressing it. But there is something called positive feedback. You're about to have a baby. You can't negative feedback that. Negative feedback would say, well, push the baby back up there. You know, you're feeling some pain down there because the baby's trying to come out. Negative feedback would be like, well, push the baby back up and stop feeling the pain there. That's not going to happen. So now your body is going to, okay, fine, that baby's coming out. That's a positive thing, but we're going to help it. You know, it's coming out. We're going we're gonna to throw everything we have at it, and we're going to help you get the baby out. So your body starts re releasing a bunch of hormones, you know, whatever. You don't have to know them now, but like, you know, oxytocin and estrogen and um, thyroid hormone, just a bunch of different hormones. Because it's like, well, the baby's coming. We're going to give it more hormones. You know, we're not trying to stop it. We're not trying to get you back to balance. We're trying to help you get that baby out. So that would be like a positive feedback. You, there is no homeostasis. Homeostasis would be try to set the clock back to a week before where the baby's just in there and chilling out. No, baby's coming out. There's no homeostasis. Throw everything you've got. You, your body wants to use all of its tools that it has to just finish. Just get it out. It's going to start 
It's going to start dilating the cervix. It's going to start making your uterine muscles contract. That's your hormones that are partly, that's your hormones that are doing that. When they want to induce labor in the hospital, they give you a hormone. They give you something called oxytocin. That, that's what your body was, is going to do anyway. So what do hormones do? They, they complement the nervous system. You know, they help the nervous system do what it's supposed to do. Two, homeostasis. Keep the balance in your body. I, I don't know, I'm the hypothalamus. That's kind of like the central processing unit. Think about your car. There's like a computer in your car. It's monitoring everything. How do you know if you have low tire pressure? How do you know if you're low on gas? How do you know if it's overheating? There's stuff on your dashboard that, that lights up, right? There's a computer that's got like signals that it's sent to your tires and to your gas tank and, and it, gets, it gets information. That's kind of like your hypothalamus. All right, you're gonna see me having lots of problems with this through the semester. Yeah, all right. So, hormones work in different ways. Um, and I might have this on the next slide, I shouldn't have. Oh, no, I don't. Hormones work in different ways. Most of them are what we call circulating hormones meaning that they go into the blood. When you want to die up, when you want to like make your uterine muscles contract during labor, that comes from your brain. The chemicals released in your brain, it goes into the bloodstream, it goes down your neck, around your body, it makes its way down to your um, uterus and it makes those muscles contract. That's circulating hormone. Most hormones do that, they just go into your blood and they start circulating through your body. But the question is, when oxytocin is released and it makes your uterine muscles contract, why doesn't it go down to your, your feet and make your feet contract? Or why is it not making your, like you just make a bunch of fists instead of contracting your uterus. Why is it your uterus that contracts and not everything else in your body? Not. It's, well, it's because of what we call receptors. So it's like there's like a protein, a receptor is a protein, right? There's a receptor on your cell in your uterus. The other cells don't have that receptor. So this oxytocin is going through your whole body. It's going down to your feet. It's going down to your hands. It's going through your liver. It's going through your whole body, but only... The only place that has the receptors for it is your uterus. So that's kind of like the key to how hormones work in your body. It's like you imagine like the blood being like the Mississippi River, right? You've got different sized boats. Not every boat can dock in every place. You can't get a huge boat and it just docks on the marina on Paris Road like a container ship, right? That's not gonna happen, right? So not everything can dock everywhere. You can't get a little sailboat and it goes to like the port of New Orleans and just like pulls into one of those huge places, right? So every, you know, like every cell has its dock, its special dock to get the special kind of boat, right? The boat is the hormone and the dock is a receptor. You're gonna make testosterone and estrogen and progesterone when you're like a teenager. So you grow hair under your arms. Why don't you grow hair like on your eyeball? Right? Cause the, the, the hormones are all through your body. Why is it not going to your forehead and you just grow hair right in the middle of your forehead? Because that doesn't, you don't have any receptors there. You're not taking in that, that testosterone. 
I've got the cells under my arm took in the testosterone, thankfully, and I didn't grow a bunch of pubic hair like all on my nose. That's where the receptors were. That was the dock, and the boat was the testosterone. Um, so that's circulating. Sometimes you can make a hormone that doesn't end up going in your bloodstream. It just goes close by, and it works there. So we call this a paracrine hormone. Call it, it's a, these are local. They work locally. They're not going to go to someplace far away. So the word para means nearby. So it's going to work really nearby or um, even on the same cell. This one's called auto. Auto means self. Autocrine, the cell releases the hormone and the hormone turns around and works on the same cell that released it. It's kind of weird. Your heart makes a hormone that slows the heart down. Why? Isn't there like a better way? Why do you got to make a hormone and release it? And then the hormone turns around and comes back to the same cell. I don't know why it does it, but it does. But that's very rare. This is more common. Most of them are circulating. Hormones interact with each other. They don't, hormones are linked. They don't work just by themselves. Like I have this job and I just do it by myself. And you know, I keep, I'm talking about oxytocin, right? Oxytocin is not responsible for childbirth by itself. You don't just release oxytocin and bam, a baby comes out. <clears throat> it's not what happens. You need lots of hormones working together, synergy. So hormones can work together. It's not just oxytocin that starts to make you produce milk. But we have another hormone called prolactin. So even the word prolactin, lactate, you're like, oh, prolactin, that makes breast milk. Not by itself. That's not enough. You, you need that, but you also need oxytocin and some other hormones. So hormones can work together. And sometimes they can work against each other. So I was looking at the screen there. I'm like, why, why is it? Sometimes they can work against. Insulin lowers blood sugar. Glucagon raises blood sugar. So they're doing opposite actions. Now, I mean, you could say, well, they're both working together to keep your normal blood level, like blood sugar, but I mean, technically they do opposite jobs, right? They're antagonizing each other. You guys aren't seeing that backwards? No. I hope it doesn't show up backwards on the Good. So they can work against each other and then permissive. One hormone gives permission to another. Like really the, the one with the breast milk, prolactin, that, you know, you need permission from oxytocin. It's like they're working together, but they need permission because you don't want to just go make breast milk. What if you're six months pregnant? Like that's a lot of energy for your body to go start making milk when there's no baby to take it. So your body doesn't want to just do things. Your body has a lot of backup systems. Like, what am I trying to say? You don't want to just do things that are that that that, you're, that use up a lot of. When you want to launch a nuclear missile, like you take two keys and you put them in simultaneously, and two different people got to turn them at the same time. Like, like there's there's standards, right? You don't want to just accidentally launch a nuclear missile. That's like your body. Like, that's why you have permissive hormones. You don't want to accidentally make a blood clot. You don't want to accidentally start making breast milk when there's no baby. It takes up a lot of energy. You don't want to accidentally do anything. So your body's got systems built in 
to protect you from doing stuff like that. You don't want to accidentally fight or flight for no reason. It's gonna, it's gonna screw up your head, right? That's people with PTSD. They just, their, their, their fight or flight response is going on all the time, right? It's, it's, it fucks with your head. It, it physically, it, cause your body's putting a lot of energy into something when there's no reason to, right? So you need, per, that's one of the things that like permissive hormones do. this on or off. I'm going to go like two more minutes. Oh, uh, no, actually, I'm not even. Well, all right. I'm going to talk about one more thing. I'm not even going to go to the next slide because we're kind of out of time already. I told you guys 10 o'clock. Um, hormones go into you. There are two types of hormones. Um, let find a better pen. There's two types of hormones. Um, and I'm going to tell you when I get a good pen. Lipid soluble and water soluble. No, actually, uh, lipid soluble and water soluble. Some hormones break down in water. Some hormones break down in fats, like fat or oil. Same thing like with vitamins. Some vitamins hang out in your water. Some, ha some vitamins hang out in your fat stores. Vitamin D, for example, you're not going to find vitamin D in places where, you know, vitamin D is made out of like oil, like lipid. So blood, water and oil don't mix, right? So you're not going to find vitamin D mixing with water in your body. It hangs out with your fat. Same thing with hormones. Some hormones hang out with fat. And some hormones hang out in water. To understand which is which, it's best just to know which ones are lipid soluble. And then whatever isn't is water. Right, so lipid soluble steroids. And thyroid hormones, that's it. So steroids, when I say steroids, you're thinking like, you might think steroids that like for bodybuilders and stuff like that. Yes, those type of steroids, prednisone, hydrocortisone, medrol, whatever, those steroids that you would typically know as steroids, that's what I mean by steroids. But I also mean the sex hormones, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, those are also steroids. We call those steroids. And then there's a couple of others that we'll talk about in this semester that are steroids. Um, they're called whatever, corticosteroids and mineralo, whatever. So we'll, there's a different, there's some different classes of hormones that are steroids. And then thyroid, there's, there's two main thyroid hormones that your thyroid gland makes in your neck. Your thyroid gland is right about here. And it makes two hormones that regulate your metabolism. They're called T3, T4, but that's later. So if they're water-soluble hormones, they could just go into your blood because your blood's water. Your blood's water-based. So water-soluble hormones, which is everything else, they go right into your bloodstream. These are made from lipids. So again, like the water and oil don't mix. So these have to ride on top of a protein. They have to jump on the back of a protein. That's how they get through the blood. So it's not, you know, there's a, there's a thyroid hormone that's in your body, but if there's no transport protein, if there's not a protein for the thyroid hormone to jump on to go through your blood, you might have low thyroid because of that. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to give you some examples here. These can't just go in the blood. They've got to get on a protein. That's how they make it through the blood. You'll see the, if you watch the, the other video I posted on this, um, you'll see me talk about mode of action of hormones. That's what I'm going to talk about on Wednesday. I would advise you guys to just go to that other video 
and watch it. It's how hormones work. Like once the hormone gets to yourself, what does it exactly do? Like why does it make your body grow hair where there wasn't hair before? Why does, why do, how do hormones actually make your body grow hair or stop growing hair? So that's coming up on, on uh, Wednesday. I'm going to stop recording here, but you guys can ask questions if you have questions. But I'm already like late. I told you guys 10 o'clock. All right. I'm going to post this.